No other continent can rival Africa in the complexity of its human past. Home to 1.2 billion people, the world's second largest population and second largest continent after Asia, the name Africa has always been intriguing. But have you ever stopped to wonder, as home to the first great civilizations, is it really possible to know how Africa got its name and if the name Africa is even African? Is this the name ancestors used to refer to the motherland? And if Africa and Africans were robbed of their inherent way of life, their culture and their history thanks to slavery and colonization, what if they were also robbed of the knowledge of the motherland's true name? This episode of Reason Africa was made possible by our fans on Patreon. If you'd like to gain early access to these videos before they are uploaded to YouTube, please consider supporting our channel on patreon.com slash reasonafrica. As they say, what is in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. This famous line from William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is often used by those who underrate the importance of names in their attempt to play down the importance that so many people tend to place on them. This profound saying suggests that what matters is what something is and not what it is called. Simply, it means the names of things cannot affect what they actually are. If we adopt that interpretation, then the name Africa would be a name that in fact holds no meaning. So the question remains, what exactly is in a name? Well, history is in a name, tradition is in a name, family lineage, the past, the future, heritage and depth of culture are in a name, honor and respect can all be found in a name. Therefore, the history of how Africa came to be named Africa is a profound question. According to many historians, what we today know as Africa is not the continent's true name. For a long time, the historical origins of the name Africa have been in dispute. A school of thought argues that the name Africa never originated from within the people and her people never associated with the name. The theory suggests that the name Africa is derived from the name of a famous Roman invader named Leo Africanus, whose writings were used for some 400 years as one of Europe's principal sources of information about Africa. Following a series of wars between Rome and the ancient North African Empire of Carthage, which is present-day Tunisia from 264 BC to 146 BC, and victories in the Second Punic War, it is believed the name Africa was derived from the Roman invader's name. He later wrote a book titled A Geographical History of Africa, written in the 1400s, and he focuses on only the northern part of the continent, it is believed he never traveled south of the Sahara. The book was significant in shaping the idea of Africa for early modern Europeans who named the continent after Africanus. I can only imagine how objectionable it is for pan-Africanist groups to accept that the name Africa has foreign connotations. Understandably so, names go much farther than the individual to whom they are attached to. They tell stories of empires and civilizations, they draw pictures of pride, education and greatness that would be the envy of every artist. A name has the power to keep in memory struggles of the past and promise prosperity for the future. However, historians agree on one thing, that the name Africa was initially used to refer to only the northern part of the continent. Then, a few millennia later, it was used to refer to the whole continent after the Europeans continued exploring and learned of the complete size of the continent and the name that the Romans had originally used for what was their small province stuck. African historians vehemently disagree with the Louis Africanus theory, poking holes in the hypothesis and citing two reasons. First, Louis is a French name of German origin, the earliest evidence of French people and or culture at the earliest dates to several centuries after the fall of Rome, therefore no Roman would have been named Louis. And second, referring to him as a European invader 
implies some cultural solidarity between the Romans and other European people. At the time of the Roman Empire, there was no European identity and no European culture. Not to say that there still is today, but there is certainly a distinct cultural zone in Europe which was not present between 1 and 300 AD. According to another school of thought, the name Africa has always been in existence before the Romans invaded the land. African history scholars argue that the claims that the name Africa never originated from Africans and was created by the Romans is totally false. The theory is based on information that the Greeks occupied Africa in 332 BC, followed by Romans in 30 BC, and that the Greeks already knew Africa with the name Africa, but had various pronunciations due to Africa's diversity in language. It is estimated that there are over 6,000 languages in the world, and over 3,000 of them are from Africa. Going by this theory, the name Africa could either have been derived from the Greek word Afrik, meaning free from cold, or the Phoenician word Afar, which means dust, or from Latin Africa, which means hot or sunny. A further explanation is that the name Afri, which is Latin, was used by the Romans to refer to those who lived south of the Mediterranean Sea. The origins of the word Africa is nevertheless still a raging and very present debate. Undoubtedly, there is no unanimity on the sources and original meanings of the word Africa. The foreignness of the name reportedly once prompted Professor Wallace Oyinka the first African Nobel laureate in literature to demand that the name Africa be dropped, and as an act of self-definition, he proposed the adoption of terms for Africa and African to be rooted in an indigenous language, preferably a Bibirim and a Bibiman from Makan, which is a language spoken in Ghana. So what was the original name of Africa? Multiple sources say Africa is said to be known originally as Al-Kebulan. The word Al-Kebulan is said to mean mother of mankind or garden of Eden. According to some historians, Al-Kebulan is the oldest and the only word of indigenous origin. It should be noted that before the word Al-Kebulan was replaced by the word Africa, Al-Kebulan was called many names including Libya, Kofie, Otigia and Ethiopia with Africa being the latest. Al-Kebulan is the oldest name that has indigenous African origins and was used by the Moors, the Nubians, the Numidians, the people of the Carthaginian Empire, also called Carthadans, and finally the people of Ethiopia. In the late 17th century, the name Africa is said to have been the new name given to Al-Kebulan because the Europeans, during their explorations, preferred Latin names to others. Most of the names given to Africa, including Africa, were however used to refer to only small sections of the continent. Consider that Africa has a 250,000-year history of human life. While most of that is unrecorded, humans were almost certainly using language early on and it can be said definitively that they had a name or names for the continent. Perhaps in line with this newfound language, Africans should from now be referred to as Al-Kebulanites. Enjoy the sport of Al-Kebulan Cup of Nations or the All Al-Kebulan Games, the new free trade agreement to be named the Al-Kebulan Continental Free Trade Agreement and the African Union to become the Al-Kebulanite Union. Perhaps also my comrade and YouTuber Wade Meyer would also consider renaming his illustrious movement from Africa to the world to Al-Kebulan to the world. Let me know in the comment section below if you think Al-Kebulan has a nice ring to it and if Africans should adopt it or if the name Africa still takes the day. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon to stay up to date on all things Africa. Now, I have a playlist I'm gonna put on top of the screen right now that you should click on and watch if you'd like to have some better understanding of the continent. So go ahead and click on that and watch some of those videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you 
next time.